So hello to everyone and uh, welcome to the Sea Talks number four. At least in Serbia today is a great weather. So if you are now following us and not enjoying outside, that means that you are very interested in this topic. So thank you for being uh, with us today. My name is Nezhan Andrić and I want to welcome you on behalf of Young Ambassadors from Niche in Serbia. So these C Talks webinars are part of the project that we are doing together with our partners from Social Entrepreneurship Observatory from North Macedonia, thanks to the support of a Swedish Institute and Lund University. So every Thursday we are speaking about different parts of social entrepreneurship and social economy field. So today, as you know, we will speak about the social entrepreneurship ecosystem, its development, importance, and try to bring it closer to the new and upcoming entrepreneurs. Now I'm giving the floor to my colleague Stefan from Social Entrepreneurship Observatory to say hello as well. Uh, hi everyone, uh, it's great to see you here and uh, on this nice weather uh, to see you uh, interested in this webinar. Uh, we also, you can also follow and share the, this webinar on Facebook because we are going live. It's good to know that. Um, yes, I'm Stefan Cicevaliev, I'm the Executive Director from the Social Entrepreneurship Observatory based in Skopje. And uh, yeah, I would not take a lot of time introducing myself and the observatory because this is already a practice. This is our fourth webinar of fourth Thursday. We have a lot more, so uh, we'll get to know each other through the webinar, right? Thank you. And as I mentioned before, yeah, our today's topic is development of social entrepreneurship ecosystem. And we are having great speakers from three countries today who will share their knowledge and experience in this topic. So today with us, we have Marie Logrian, senior lecturer from Lund University in Sweden, Neven Marinovic, director of Smart Collective and president of Euclid Network from Serbia, and Alexandra Iloska, researcher at the Association for Research, Communication and Development Public from North Macedonia. So welcome to all of you and thank you very much for being with us today and for sharing your experience and your knowledge with our, the, our audience here on Zoom and also on Facebook page. And at the beginning, maybe we can start uh, with a presentation, a short presentation about our speakers, since we have here the participants who are listening from the whole region and from the whole Europe. So maybe we can present them more about the work that you are doing in this field. So Marie, maybe we can start with you and to hear uh, your introduction about the, your work and also the Lund University. So please, you can start. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm a senior lecturer at the uh, Stenke Johnson Center for Entrepreneurship at Lund University. And we are doing research and uh, also educations within entrepreneurship. Um, I'm, I've been also been, been involved in uh, science parks and incubators and the ecosystem as such research, research wise and also have some educations uh, in that uh, field. Uh, well, in addition, I was the co-founder of the Senko Johnson Center for Entrepreneurship, and I have been its uh, director for, well, up until 2018, I think. Uh, now I'm, I'm just a lecturer. <laughs> okay, thank you. Great, great. Thank you Mari, very much for being with us today. So, Nevin, we can go to you and hear more about the, your work and the work of Smart Collective. We had on the first seat of your colleague Ivana, but of course to hear from the, your perspective, the Smart Collective work and also the EUCID net. Okay, thank you, uh, Susan, and thanks for the, for the invitation. Uh, uh, I hope we'll be able to uh, soon enough have also physical meetings so that we can even interact more with people. Uh, so Smart Collective is an organization based in Belgrade and uh, 
we provide various types of support to uh, social businesses or businesses with impact uh, from uh, funding to technical support to access to market uh, matching them with uh, uh, companies from the let's say so-called the classic private sector so they can become part of the supply chain and of course promotion and you know visibility uh, we have also launched last year the first uh, impact fund in the country where we provide uh, uh, favorable or soft financial instruments, so zero interest loans to uh, uh, to social businesses uh, uh, in the country, together with the investment readiness program, where we you know, provide them capacity building and technical support, and try to match them also with other potential funders and and investors. Apart from that, we also manage something called Responsible Business Forum, which is a network of let's say 30 something companies mainly uh, big companies uh, where we also try to promote the concept of uh, uh, how to say instigating or incorporating sustainability into everyday business practices and of course we heavily misuse this uh, this network to try to pitch to them various ideas about cooperation with uh, uh, with social enterprises and uh, ways of them to support social businesses because as i said sometimes it's the access to market is much more valuable than uh, 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 than providing some kind of grant or, or or other financial instrument or a loan so yes i would i would stop here <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. And Alexandra, to hear more about the association public, we are really have a great cooperation with uh, your association through the DSS network, and we know a lot about your work, but to hear from your perspective, what are you working now and usually in your project? Thank you very much, uh, Snezhana and uh, Stefan, for the uh, invitation. Uh, as an uh, organization, we are doing uh, actually quite a lot um, in the field of uh, the social enterprises, uh, starting from running our own uh, social enterprise, the, the street paper face-to-face, uh, -face, that actually uh, enables us uh, to learn from the practice and uh, from that experience that we uh, gather uh, through the street paper face-to-face uh, -face and our direct work with uh, the most uh, deprived uh, persons uh, that lived in uh, they live in North Macedonia actually enables us uh, to uh, to um, uh, to shape and uh, to map what are the existing gaps in the ecosystem for uh, social enterprises and um, uh, we uh, as an organization um, uh, and as a practitioners as well we identified that uh, the, 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 that uh, we uh, that don't have a uh, good and well developed uh, ecosystem for social enterprises so as an organization we initiated and we coordinated uh, the development of the first uh, national strategy for uh, social uh, enterprises that hopefully will be adopted adopted by uh, mid-July. Uh, uh, also, very similarly as uh, Smart uh, Collective, uh, we, uh, through the uh, companies doing good forum uh, that we are organizing on a biannual uh, basis, we try to encourage and uh, 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 partnerships and cooperation between uh, social enterprises and uh, the traditional uh, business sector as a way to ensure uh, sustainability of um, uh, social uh, enterprises. Uh, moreover, uh, we also initiated in uh, 2018 uh, the first national declaration of uh, social enterprises where, where a lot of uh, stakeholders, more than uh, 45 stakeholders, coming from various, uh, from all sectors, public, private, and uh, the third sector committed to themselves to, the, uh, to promote and to work uh, together uh, towards uh, the development of the ecosystem of social enterprises, but also uh, promoting the, the values uh, of um, uh, social uh, enterprises. And um, uh, following uh, the needs, as I said, mostly as um, uh, practitioners, we try to follow and, uh, and uh, provide answer to the, to the uh, identified uh, gaps. Uh, we uh, initiated and uh, established the first national network of uh, social enterprises in uh, North Macedonia. So shortly, uh, that is uh, the work that we are doing currently. 
Thank you very much. And we will have enough time to speak about all these initiatives later. And thank you once again to all of you. And before we start with the discussion, just to invite everyone who are following us here on Zoom or on Facebook pages, you can write your questions during the whole discussion or in comments on Facebook. And after the discussion, all the speakers will answer your questions. So please feel free to ask everything. Uh, yeah, great, great. Uh, basically, uh, it, it's great that you mentioned that because uh, it is good to know that along the whole webinar, you can ask anything you want. Uh, and you already heard uh, our speakers, uh, their, their experience, what they do. So uh, feel free to ask them anything. Okay, guys, uh, now let's talk social entrepreneurship. Uh, thank you for having the time to be here, and uh, we will start here with, uh, with Alexandra. Alexandra, because now you were talking about what the public has done and what the organization has done. Uh, can you just explain, in, sh in short, uh, what are the parts that consist the social entrepreneurship ecosystem? Yes, I have to unmute myself. Mm -hmm. I'm always forgetting. Well, um, while we were uh, working on uh, on the strategy, we actually uh, map identified, and uh, we can all agree that actually the ecosystem of uh, social enterprises are it's are very uh, complex, and they are uh, consistent of uh, various components that actually are uh, uh, mutually uh, mutually very uh, dependent, and uh, they could. And uh, if one comp uh, one of the components is missing, then uh, the the other the entire ecosystem uh, can uh, can be uh, non-functional. Uh, so uh, when it comes to the components of uh, the ecosystem of, uh, for social enterprises. Uh, uh, it's not something that we made up. Uh, it's uh, something that uh, that exists as a, as a concept, and it's uh, it has been developed and uh, promoted by the European Commission. Uh, so uh, th that is actually the, the concept that we also adopt and that we try to integrate and uh, fully uh, fully uh, fully integrate it into the um, into the work and the context that exists in uh, in our uh, country. So uh, when it comes to the ecosystem, the most um, important, especially uh, for the countries where the ecosystem is very uh, fragmented, is uh, uh, something that we called that we call um, uh, creating a culture for social entrepreneurship. And uh, when we uh, say a culture for social entrepreneurship, uh, we first and primarily mean to the political and legal recognition of social enterprises. Uh, that mean, uh, and without this, actually, we notice that uh, social enterprises cannot um, flourish and cannot uh, uh, realize their full potential. Uh, then, of course, the education on social enterprises, and when re we refer to education, we have uh, noticed that uh, in our context, it's necessary to integrate the, the social enterprises as a concept in all levels of education in order to enable and support uh, the um, uh, support new generations that are more sensible uh, for uh, for the social issues and that are more willing to contribute. And um, that is not something that you can uh, bring up uh, in a higher education. It's something that you have to nurture uh, through the entire education in order to have a long-term effect. And um, of course, here, the most important is the research on social enterprises because uh, we need, in order to be able to create better policies, better programs, uh, and uh, to see what's happening in the entire ecosystem, we need to know what as a social enterprise do we have. And social enterprises are actually different in all countries. It's not something that we can uh, just uh, copy paste and, uh, and uh, integrate it uh, in our context. We are different. Every country is, uh, is uh, different. Every context is different. And we need to know what do we have as a, as a practice. And uh, 
Actually, the operational definition that has been uh, developed by the European Commission, it's a, it's a very useful uh, tool that uh, enables us as um, actors in the ecosystem to better identify and uh, map uh, social, the different models of social enterprises in the country. And at the end, uh, of course, it's uh, the, uh, the, the social recognition of social enterprises and the value that they deliver in the uh, society. Uh, and uh, that this is uh, only uh, uh, way, uh, can only be achieved if we continuously uh, measure and uh, manage the, social, the impact that uh, social enterprises is, are delivering. Then, of course, so when we go on the other side of the, uh, on the other group of components, we have uh, the development of, um, of market for social enterprises. And here we have the public sector through the public uh, contracts and uh, the promotion of social procurement. Then we have the private sector, which uh, should be enabled and encouraged to uh, establish um, the various uh, 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 strategic partnerships and um should, uh, with the uh, social enterprises, but also uh, to uh, should they should uh, be encouraged to integrate social enterprises in their uh, value uh, chains. And then at the end, of course, uh, the most important uh, are also important uh, the citizens themselves, who should uh, be encouraged and uh, uh, be more informed about uh, their uh, buying decisions. Then we come to the third set of uh, components and uh, th th those are the actors in the ecosystem. And uh, here uh, we have uh, the, the networks and the mechanisms for mutual cooperation between social enterprises. And from our experience uh, that uh, we have seen in our uh, country, this actually uh, the networks and the mutual cooperation between social enterprises Enterprises has uh, has uh, proven to be uh, one of the um, very effective and uh, positive uh, mechanisms uh, that leads to a long-term sustainability of um, uh, social enterprises. And uh, then, uh, of course, are the entire all the actors in the ecosystem for social enterprises who should uh, be enabled to understand the different models of social enterprises in the, uh, that exist in a specific um, uh, context and uh, the, the different uh, legal frameworks that enable uh, the, uh, the establishment and the development of social enterprises and based on the, the, that insight to uh, develop uh, different uh, programs and the support uh, for the, uh, the uh, based on the real needs of uh, social enterprises. And uh, then at the end, uh, we have um, the most important uh, uh, part uh, of uh, the ecosystem, which is uh, missing, unfortunately, still in uh, in uh, Macedonia, is uh, and uh, those are the uh, the social finance uh, instruments that again has to have to be developed in accordance with the needs, uh, with the real needs and the real capacities of uh, social enterprises. Uh, thank you, Alexandra. Wow. Uh... It, it, it seems like a, a really complicated system, right? Uh, of course, social entrepreneurship is a transversal topic. It's an intersectoral topic which bridges uh, across dimensions and across sectors. So um, it should be complicated, right? But once set up, uh, it should be conducive for social enterprises. And uh, of course, we should promote it and then upgrade every time that there is a new innovation or a uh, new uh, approach to, to the ecosystem. Uh, thank you for that. And thank you for that elaborate, uh, basically the elaborate explanation about the parts of the uh, social entrepreneurship ecosystem. It's great um, for those who are seeing that social entrepreneurship is not only something that is imagined uh, 30 years ago, but something that uh, is, a, is a complicated field, which can be uh, basically can provide very advantages to our society and communities. Uh, thank you, Alexandra, again. Um, but in order to build this ecosystem, Marie, how to build strong social entrepreneurship ecosystem which will foster social innovation and 
enterprises growth. Can you tell us more about that? Wow, here comes the recipe, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, well, it, it's not simple, uh, of course, and, and I'm not sure that you actually can build a, a I mean, there is not one way uh, one one uh, uh, one size fits all in this, as you also said, Alexandra. Uh, it depends a lot about context, and and uh, it it depends on on a lot of different things. And um, and to be honest, I I don't I don't think that Sweden has a very elaborate ecosystem when it comes to social entrepreneurship. Uh, I think we have a quite an elaborate ecosystem when it comes to entrepreneurship in general. And I also think that we tend to, to uh, push also the social ventures into that system. Uh, and, and that is because we, uh, we, we, most of our social ventures are actually ventures. So, so they, they do social, social things, so things that are good for, for, for social purposes, but they also do it with a business model that actually brings in funding or brings in uh, a, um, a profits uh, in order to, to do more good in the end. So, so I think we have more of a philosophy in, in Sweden that social ventures are ventures, but they do social good things. And, and, and I think that that, that, that has a, a history with it because normally in Sweden, or in, we, we have a history that we pay a lot of taxes. And so the, the, the state should be the ones that take care of everyone. Uh, so people get social, we have social, social, social security system. Uh, we have uh, free healthcare. We have uh, all of these things, uh, free schooling, for instance. So all of these, things are free, but we pay taxes. So, uh, so that's why we, we do not really have that kind of, of, uh, of ecosystem for, for social uh, businesses or for social uh, enterprise. But however, lately that has changed in, in some way because the, the, the public sector cannot really do all the things that they don't manage to do all the things that are, that are needed. So. Uh, and then suddenly we get these uh, social uh, entrepreneurs also uh, in the system. And of course, it, they are not just popping up everywhere. They have, they, they are, there are calls from uh, the Swedish Agency for Innovation, for instance, for more social innovations. And, uh, and, uh, and they're also funding from different regional agencies for more social entrepreneurship to take place. And we have as far as I know, one uh, incubator or accelerator, it is an accelerator in the region, but there's only one accelerator in the region uh, that deals with social enterprise and social ventures. But again, it is sort of, uh, the, the, the feeling is that there should be some sort of, of, uh, of, um, of profit involved. So there, would, there should be some way of making money. It doesn't have to be that they sell stuff, but some way they need to make money in the, in the end for them to be sustainable, sustainable as businesses, but also to make, uh, to make socially good things. So, and, 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 and another thing with the, with the Swedish system, I, I think that we tend to talk about social issues and environmental issues in the same sentence so to say so it's a we, we we normally talk about people planet and profit and that is the triple bottom line and we try to 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 build that together and and talk about it all uh, for both for new ventures but also for existing ventures in a way we're trying to transform existing ventures to do good uh, both for the environment and socially so uh yeah so 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 the ecosystem that we have which of course consists of uh, incubators and uh, and uh, accelerators and uh, and funding from national agencies funding from regional agencies and uh, also uh, there's business angels involved in in uh, what we call social ventures so it, it it is basically the same as an ordinary ecosystem i would say 
So sorry, no really good recipe from here. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no uh, no good recipe uh, anywhere, basically, because it's it's a matter of context. It's a matter of uh, state of affairs, state of play uh, in the countries, and depending on the policies that the current governments have, because the political will depends on the politicians that are the ru ruling with the country, let's say like that. Uh, but also, uh, Alexander also mentioned that uh, not only we do not need only political will, but we need legal recognition as well, because more, many institutions do not recognize social enterprises because they are not legally recognized or they do not have a certain legal entity re registered in order to provide funds. So they are basically swimming like in the gray area at the moment. Uh, Nevan, can I ask you, uh, why is it important for social entrepreneurship to know the ecosystem and, uh, and how to learn it? Uh, well, I think, you know, if we, you know, sometimes we, we use the word ecosystem without actually, you know, thinking where it comes from. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and I guess, you know, if we would be thinking more about that, then maybe, maybe it would be easier for us also to understand what do we need to do to build our ecosystem and how to connect uh, uh, within it. And basically, you know, it's, it's, uh, 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 it's a community of living organisms and nature and non-living organisms that, you know, keeps us uh, interacting with each other and that provides food and that provides shelter and that, you know, our food to some other. <laughs> so I think, you know, uh, uh, having said that, I think for for uh, for social businesses like any other uh, business or any other entity, it's extremely important to understand that ecosystem, especially given the fact that the ecosystem for social enterprises, unlike ecosystems for some other more established forms, either of business or other forms of, of, uh, of work, uh, is much less established. You know, it's much less known. So you know, it, need, it needs to, to, to put, uh, uh, it's need, it, it needs to be nurtured, I would say, more carefully. Uh, having said that, I think, you know, the, uh, 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 how, how should they understand that ecosystem? I think that's uh, partly easy, partly probably difficult, but, you know, looking at, you know, what's their value chain, what's their supply chain, looking at where their customers are, looking at where their opportunities for funding are, uh, uh, at the end of the day, and where they can get additional support, you know, so uh, 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 going both internally and externally, seeing where, you know, they like some knowledge or they like some people or they like some funding or, you know, uh, 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 different things, because if you ask majority of social enterprises, the first thing, the only thing they would say they like is, is money. But once, you know, start digging, you know, you will see that there is you know, maybe uh, 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 they're liking the sales strategy or they're liking good distribution and that, you know, money, of course, should come, but not as a, not as a first thing and not some, as something that, that should solve problems. And I think for social enterprises, it's even more difficult. And this is to get back to your question, why is it important or even more important for them to understand their system? Because if you're a traditional business, you can probably you can probably you know uh, learn from uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, learn from your peers. There is a lot of experience around. There is a lot of other entrepreneurs. There is a lot of agencies. There is a lot of even schools you know teaching you how to run your your business. So there is a lot of knowledge laying around and a lot of resources that you can tap into. If you're a social, you can go to a bank. You can you know ask for a loan. For, for you know for your business or you know you can talk to some other uh, 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 as as uh, Marie has said to public, ask for public funding which is directed to I don't know business development services and things like this uh, when it comes to uh, uh, so as a classical business you know you you're actually able to focus on your business development business growth and customer base and you know your service or your product and you know on your core business functionality as a social business for you it's not that easy. So this is why you, you know, uh, need to focus also on your uh, on your ecosystem and build much stronger connections within your ecosystem because probably there would only be a handful of financial institutions providing loans for social business. So if you're looking for funding, you really should know your ecosystem and you really should know where 
you can actually look for funding. When you know, uh, when you're trying to let's say uh, uh, enter a supply chain of a big company, you really should know which companies are having you know various programs or support or incentive mechanisms, uh, 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 you know, to support social businesses. Or you know, you really need to understand if there is any public procurement policies that to support. Or you need to be very creative and saying, okay, if my social business provides positive social impact or employs various vulnerable groups, maybe I can, you know, benefit from specific programs which are not intended to, to, to social businesses as such, but are supporting, let's say, employment of uh, disabled people or employment of some minority people. So, uh, uh, having said that, you know, if you really need to, you know, uh, uh, to grow your business as a social entrepreneur, you must be much more rooted, that is at least from my opinion, into your ecosystem and uh, be much more connected and you know try to get much more benefits from the and support from the ecosystem than as a classical entrepreneur because you know at the end of the day this is the only way you can you know both survive and strive and 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 build your business so uh, this is why i think the importance of ecosystem for social businesses is probably even higher and uh, 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 much more relevant than than to you know if you're trying to build a classical business uh, thank you, Nevan. Uh, I think that this first round of questions basically concluded that uh, the the most specific word is context, right? Because it's a matter of uh, context in the countries. It's a matter of social entrepreneurs, uh, what where they are headed and where they're focused, and it's a matter of context in relation to social enterprises because some of them need funding some of them human resources some of them need technology to achieve their their goal right so uh, i think that so we should mention also that social entrepreneurs should probably before starting a social enterprise or going uh, uh, ahead with their idea to basically find out what their context lies in terms of their idea and their business plan and uh, how they try, are going to try to develop it and to achieve it uh, before jumping uh, over the line and, and doing that. But they can also learn with practice, of course, and uh, networking and partnerships and so on and so forth. Um, thank you for, 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 thank you all. And now, Snezana, please continue. <laughs> No, I think that uh, maybe we can uh, stay a little bit more with Nevin because you were speaking about all this, uh, situation and how they it is important to understand the whole ecosystem but maybe can you present us more about the current situation in serbia so the development of the ecosystem and what is the smart collective doing uh, in this field yeah sure i think uh, uh definitely the scarcer the resources overall resources and the overall economic development in the country probably you know, it would reflect the ecosystem of social businesses and, and social entrepreneurship. So I would say the situation in Serbia is not is not great. Uh, this is, you know, we're not speaking about a very developed ecosystem, but also if you want to look at it from a more positive end, you know, if we look 10 days, 10, 10 years, you know, uh, 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 in the past, we see that there is now many, many different things happening, you know, that were completely unexistent, non-existent. Uh, uh, a few years ago. So what I would say, uh, maybe I can start with uh, with some probably uh, uh, gaps in the ecosystem and uh, and some negatives uh, uh, so that we can finish with on the positive side. Uh, I think, you know, one of the big problems is, of course, the uh, lack of support and any kind of strategic commitment from the public sector, you know, and I think this is this is one of the key issues why, you know, we cannot move forward, we cannot move faster. I'm not speaking about the law on social enterprises because, you know, even if the state, uh, announced, you know, they announced the law many times, but even if they, the law is there, this would not solve the situation. I'm speaking about, you know, whether the state and the public sector want to systematically support the development of business with positive social impact or not. Is it something they're interested in or not? You know, do they see that as a potential way of also solving, you know, some of the issues they're working on, like inclusion, like, you know, employment of uh, various vulnerable groups, like contribution to the uh, uh, fighting the, uh, uh, let's say, environmental degradation, and many other things, you know. Uh, currently, 
obviously they don't see it and they you know don't understand this concept and it's too you know complicated or whatever so you know there is no incentives there is no strategy there is no public procurement there is no funding from any kind of regional local or or any other level so you know no kind of support and no recognition so you know uh, because we sometimes say even if you're not supporting you know you can at least you know praise the ones who are already doing things you know regardless of the circumstances that they work in and regardless of the lack of the support but you know that would also you know you can help us you know share some good case studies some good stories that inspire other people i think the other thing that is uh that is also uh lacking is uh uh, uh is you know the lack of not only social entrepreneurship as such as a metal topic but also the overall lack of you know uh, uh sustainability related issues and especially sustainability uh in, with connection with uh, with business and management in any level of education in in the country so primary school <laughs> uh, uh secondary school university you know you name it you know probably you will be able to you know, become really highly educated without ever running into, you know, social enterprise, sustainability, CSR, or any any type of these terms, uh, which I think is also then, you know, uh, 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 not helping us, you know, build future leaders, you know, the people who, who should inspire and who should, you know, be the ones behind uh, uh, various, you know, social business ideas and, and, and successful enterprises and things like this. Uh, so you know i i said these are uh, uh uh besides that of course there is uh, a lack of financial financial support so you know generally the market is uh uh bank dominated so you know 92 percent of all the money coming coming into into the uh, uh into the business sector com is coming from the banks which is quite bad so it's not diverse so you know you can only get a loan and loan will help you i don't know buy a new machine buy a car but it will not help you grow your business in the long term uh, uh, and especially there is a lack of adequate funding for social businesses which would recognize you know their specificness which would recognize their fragility which would recognize that you know actually they have higher impact maybe somewhere else not in the pure uh, quantitative you know financial results and things like this but things have started to change so for example you know since recently we now have two banks that have some kind of uh, uh, financial instrument which are more tailored to the needs of uh, uh, which are more which are more tailored to the needs of, of uh, social businesses uh, also uh, um, uh, we now have several let's say uh, intermediate or support organizations such as smart collective which are working on various levels some of them like social impact awards working on those with a startup level some like us working on a more let's say intermediary or or you know medium developed level of enterprises uh, you, know, you have more and more uh, capacity building programs you know from um, uh, 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 but this uh, movement is mainly driven by the civil society sector I, I i have to say and finally one positive movement is also that you know the private sector uh has jumped on the wagon you know before uh, the public sector so there is more and more uh, companies which are willing to have some kind of sort of positive discrimination programs where they would you know uh, on purpose you know purchase products or services from social businesses as a part of their sustainability strategy which i think also provides a boost uh, 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 to, to the social businesses and obviously since we're working for let's say uh, you know 10 years in the area finally now we have some case studies and examples to showcase so we're not speaking about you know why this is good and why you should be doing this but we can actually showcase a real person the real impact uh, that uh, that her or his enterprises uh, uh, provides and i think you know this now can actually serve as inspiration to others so i think all of these things you know access to funding access to market uh, uh having you know good examples that you can showcase and at the end of the day you know mainstreaming you know social businesses is extremely important uh, for for their for the future for the future success because it's still very unknown and uh, i will finish with this you know in majority of our countries uh even the the naming is not very good you know because you know social 
kind of sounds like socialism. So people are not sure, is this like this some kind of old socialist enterprises like public loan, this is what you're promoting, come on, you know, and, uh, or they're very skeptical because of the transition, you know, very kind of wild, wild East transition that we had in the nineties. So people are very skeptical, like, what do you mean they're making money and doing some, you know, social good at, at the same time, you know, this is not possible. There must be a scam or something. So I think, you know, we have a long way to go, but I think, you know, given also all the challenges that we're facing, that people are now understanding, especially young people, and expecting that, you know, the role of the business is not anymore, you know, just to make money and the government should deal with other things. I think now people expect and understand much more and much better that things are more fluid and that, you know, the, 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 the things are more hybrid. So that, yes, business should provide some social benefit and that the business can be at the same time this and that. So I think, you know, uh, uh, I'm kind of uh, hopeful that, you know, with, with also new generation and more successful businesses, we'll be able to push things forward. Thank you, Nevin. And yes, you now you have opened a lot of <laughs> topics for the discussion. And yeah, we were speaking in the previous uh, webinars about this all including the social entrepreneurship in the educational system to speak more to encourage young people and uh, we are definitely all agreed that uh, young people are now more aware about the impact that they can have in their surrounding in their environmental issues and how to make a business from this so this is definitely really important to speak more and to encourage even more young people and alexandra maybe we can continue with you because yeah <laughs> I think that uh, it is the similar situation in all our Western Balkan countries and maybe you can uh, now present us more how the ecosystem is developing in Macedonia and are we are facing the, all these positive and negative aspects as well there. Well, um, uh, while I was listening to, to Neven, it's, uh, uh, I was uh, told that uh, in, uh, at the same time, oh, it's the same, it's the same. So um, there is no, there, there are no huge uh, differences, uh, I, I guess, uh, not only when you compare uh, the Macedonian and the Serbian, but I think uh, from what uh, we have uh, heard uh, through, uh, uh, through our activities in the region, the situation more or less it's uh, the same in the in all uh, Western uh, Balkan uh, countries. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, I will just uh, 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 try to to sum up uh, everything what uh, Niven said. We uh, social enterprises in North Macedonia don't have um, access uh, to. Uh, to finance and uh, financial instruments. Uh, they don't have access uh, to uh, markets. When we say about access uh, to markets, um, uh, we do have um, a new law on public procurement that uh, actually promotes the concept of um, of uh, social public procurement, but uh, in uh, practice, uh, none of the public institutions has the capacity uh, to implement uh, uh, such procurement. So, uh, so now when we have uh, the legal basis uh, for such uh, for uh, for uh, the social uh, procurement, now we need uh, uh, more activities in order to strengthen the capacities of public institutions uh, to implement and to really recognize. Nice. Um to recognize social enterprises and uh, try to implement uh, the public procurement uh, in a more, let's say, sustainable uh, way. Uh, also, uh, when um, we uh, speak about the education, we, we have very limited uh, education about uh, social uh, enterprises. And even though uh, while when we were uh, developing uh, the, the strategy for uh, social enterprises and when we were uh, speaking with uh, stakeholders uh, we were also receiving information uh, that uh, even though uh, uh, social uh, entrepreneurship is uh, exists, uh, is uh, recognized in um, the high school education uh, usually uh, professors don't have the capacity to really uh, provide a quality education so we need to further build capacities uh, of uh, those educational programs. Uh, when we are talking about education on high, the, high, uh, the high education, 
uh, we don't have um, the full department on in high um, uh, education that is fully devoted on uh, uh, on uh, on uh, social enterprises or social economy as a whole. Uh, now, um, uh, since very recently, a UNU center in the Faculty of Economy at uh, Skopje was um, opened. But of course, further capacity building and financing need to be, needs to be provided for that uh, center in order to reach its um, full capacity. Uh, then um, we have a network on uh, social enterprises, but of course, uh, further capacity building of the network needs to be provided. And of course, um, uh, better, more sustainable finances in order to make its uh, programs and activities uh, more uh, sustainable and in, uh, with a much uh, higher uh, impact. Uh, so, uh, if you, if I try to sum up uh, the how how the the entire ecosystem on social enterprises looks uh, in uh, north in uh, North Macedonia, uh, it's uh, I would uh, just have to conclude that it's still fragmented. It's uh, in the very early uh, stages of uh, its uh, development. A lot of actors are missing. But even though uh, the, uh, there are actors that are existing, a lot of capacity building needs to be uh, done in order to make sure that this, um, uh, these actors are fully responding to the needs of the context and to the needs of uh, the uh, social enterprises. I will just bring one example here to, to uh, bring more uh, clarity. For example, while uh, 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 there are various uh, legal forms that in North Macedonia that enable the operation of social enterprises. But currently, most of the actors are, uh, uh, are focused on building the capacities only on, uh, uh, only on um, uh, the entities that are uh, um, operating uh, uh, as uh, civil society organizations that are implementing or are willing to develop their ecosystem, uh, their, their, their economic activities. But uh, the ecosystem uh, is, uh, we have other legal forms such as the cooperatives, the agricultural uh, cooperatives, uh, the sheltered companies. There are no entities that are providing some services and uh, working with, um, with uh, these uh, different legal uh, forms. Uh, so, um, uh, I hopefully, when uh, the strategy, uh, when, it will, when it will be adopted, uh, I, we can expect a little bit more developed uh, and a little bit more coordinated ecosystem because uh, we are also, uh, what we can see constantly um, uh, from the practice uh, is uh, that actors are not really uh, cooperating. Uh, they don't try to coordinate their work. And uh, we have a lot of uh, work uh, to be done ahead, but uh, on the other hand, we can see a lot of uh, will and uh, a lot of many uh, committed actors that are really willing to uh, to uh, to uh, to provide their input and do something uh, to uh, steer the development uh, of the ecosystem, but. Uh, at the end, what I would say is that the major challenge that uh, it, that we uh, that we can, we are facing currently is, of course, the lack of sustainable financing, not only for social enterprises but all, all also for all for the services and for the activities of all the actors that are uh, operating in the ecosystem. Yeah, okay, yes, uh, definitely. And thank you, Alexandra. And we will speak later about all the actors of the ecosystem. But you both mentioned uh, the importance of the education. So it is great that we have here the person from the educational system. So, Marie, maybe so conclusion about the role of the university, so the university that you are presenting, but in general also why it's important to educate uh, people about the social entrepreneurship, about the social impact, the business with impact, et cetera, and uh, how the university is cooperating with the other actors. I think it's extremely important, uh, actually, from several different perspectives. Uh, 
uh, first of all, of course, to, to raise awareness of, of the fact that we, we have this kind of social, um, social enterprises that they actually could be something that people can do that students actually could engage in. So from, from that perspective, from the, from the uh, just encouragement uh, perspective, I think universities have a, have a great role uh, to acknowledge that we have social issues out there that we need to address and, and uh, that students could actually be part of that, uh, part of the solution to, to, to those problems. Uh, and of course, in order to, to, to do that, we also need role models, as you were both talking about that the, the, there need to be some, some acknowledgement uh, for those who actually have done this and, and uh, that they are showcased in some way, because that is also how you build uh, interest and, and that you build awareness uh, about uh, these, uh, this kind of, of uh, companies and uh, this kind of, of ventures. Uh, and of course, you also need uh, research around these topics because doing research, you get knowledge and the knowledge need to be spread. And as you said, Alexandra, the, many actors are not really aware of the, the difficulties and the different uh, things that are, are necessary to, to have in, in, the, in, a, in a social enterprise. And of course, then we need, we need research to, to figure out what kind of, of, uh, of knowledge do we actually need in order to, to be able to provide the actors in the ecosystem with the relevant knowledge that they can in turn spread to their um, uh, the, the the companies that uh, or the activities that they uh, perform. So um, so I think in in many different levels uh, the university have have a, 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 a could be a key player actually, and it, as such also of course. Uh, engaging in the ecosystem, both with the knowledge that they have, uh, but also in, in sending students out there into the ecosystem. Uh, so serving as a, as a, um, a highway <laughs> to, into the ecosystem as well. And um, um, what, 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 what was I thinking? Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and of course, then there also needs to be some sort of initiatives taken by the universities and, and, a, and a, uh, a will from the university side to address these matters, because they need to employ people that are interested in doing research and doing teaching in these areas. So uh, we have, for instance, now a professor in social entrepreneurship and, and that professor needs funding from somewhere. So there needs to be funding also to the universities or at least a will from the universities to engage in these, these tasks, in these questions. Uh, so, and, and then they, that will spill over to the rest of the ecosystem in different ways, I would say. But, but also, I mean, this is, this is both from top down and bottom up in a way. You can't build everything top down. You also need to build bottom up. And I think the universities also have a, have a, a um, uh, ha has a position to increase the engagement for the bottom up approach. Because when you encourage students, for instance, to, to, uh, well, to, to be aware of these things, there becomes a bottom up movement that also encourages the, the top-down approach because then they feel that okay so this may be necessary and then we have to do something and, and uh, create funds or make calls or, or whatever yeah <laughs> yeah yeah definitely we need to work with the student but of course with the professors and all the actors that are including in the whole process so i think that is now part of the discussion where we can speak more about the key actors so Stefan, you can continue. Uh, yeah, quite, quite a uh, interesting discussion. And we were talking about the actors and uh, their roles, but uh, for those who are listening to this webinar and who do not know, we are talking about edu the education and research institutions as one of the actors. But for those who, who do not know uh, the actors in the social entrepreneurship ecosystem, Niven, could you tell us more about um, who are the actors? What are the key actors in the social entrepreneurship ecosystem? How to engage them? How to connect, connect with them and communicate with them? 
Well, I think definitely uh, uh, the answer to the last part of your question is like, you know, differently with different actors, you know, so there is not one size fits all, you know, when it comes to communication. Uh, uh, and also, uh, starting from also the end of your question, maybe I think the thing is to learn the language of, of you know, because a lot of the things get, uh, get lost in translation. At least this is my impression. You would have social enterprises, you know, a lot of them coming from the civil society sector, a lot of them coming, you know, you, you know, and, you know, uh, 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 spending their, you know, life work on, you know, supporting various, various, I don't know, vulnerable groups and working to build their communities. And then they need to translate what they're doing into the language business. So they need to learn how to speak to a bank, how to speak with a with an investor, how to speak, uh, how to negotiate the deal with the distributor, you know. And these guys, you know, although they might think it's a very good thing that they do also some, you know, uh, uh, nice uh, community building and community development work, would need to, you know, understand and would need things to be, you know, told in their language. So I think uh, 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 a lot of them, uh, a lot of that comes, and this is why the role of organizations such as yours and uh, is very important because you kind of, us, we act as some kind of intermediary, some kind of also translators, and some kind of, um, I would say, uh, 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 connection providers, you know, within the ecosystem, which I think is very, very important because uh, I think, you know, we need to establish, you know, in each of our countries and, you know, not only one, but several access of points for social enterprise on one side, but, you know, for all the other actors on the other side. So what we have now is a situation is that, for example, you know, we would have IKEA coming to us saying, listen, we would like to engage some social enterprises into our supply chain. Can you help us to, I don't know, uh, 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 find some social enterprise in these and these sectors because this is what we would be interested in, you know, or, you know, we would have a financial institution coming in and saying, you know, we are thinking about using uh, uh, European Co Commission funded easy guarantees to provide loans, favorable loans to businesses with impact. Can you help us? You know, so I think, you know, it goes both ways, you know. So it's not only that, of course, primarily you serve the interests of social businesses, which come, you know, in various uh, forms and they would come ask for advice, for ideas, for money, for connections. But at the end of the day, you serve uh, the whole ecosystem. And uh, it's not only accelerators, incubators. It's also, as Alexandre has been mentioning, it's also uh, networks. It's also universities because they also, uh, to, to a certain extent, that act as, as catalysts. And I think, you know, uh, 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 from there, things, you know, uh, go natural because, you know, uh, once they know, who to ask for something, then I would know to go to the university to get some knowledge that they need or some research that is conducted there, or I would go to my network to ask, you know, is anybody else has a similar experience, or I would come to, I don't know, Smart Collective and help them to, you know, uh, uh, find you my business plan so I can be eligible for funding from an investor or from a bank. So I think uh, 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 social entrepreneur, uh, this is what I said at the beginning, and this is my thesis, needs to be much more connected and needs to put extra efforts into kind of this networking and learning circle uh, 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 because, you know, uh, uh, he or she, they need to, you know, also uh, use and utilize on these chances and opportunities that uh, 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 because uh, they, you know, building their business is always balancing between uh, uh, you know, the social mission and, and the business development and, you know, as they're having heavier tasks, they, 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 they need to, you know, build a much stronger pool of supporters uh, within the ecosystem. Uh, thank you, Nevan. Uh, it, it's interesting that uh, social entrepreneurs are double burdened by, by their nature, right? They have an economic and social purpose, social goals, uh, um, and uh, they also have to learn the languages, the languages of both private and public sector, but also to with uh, the other actors as well, so they can navigate through the system. Uh, with that in mind, I'm coming to Alexandra and uh, want to ask her how can social entrepreneurs navigate through the social enterprises or social entrepreneurship ecosystem in the current context uh, in the Western Balkans or in North Macedonia for the moment. 
Well, um, if I uh, speak uh, from the perspective of um, uh, of, a so of the social entrepreneur, um, then um, uh, this currently within this uh, context and within this setup, uh, social enterprises uh, are not in a very, uh, at least uh, in uh, not, not only North Macedonia, but in uh, the Western Balkans are not in the very favorable situation. Uh, because uh, from what we can uh, see is that uh, still uh, in our context, it's a, it's a concept that is still it's emerging. And um, uh, it's, it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy uh, to help uh, public, for example, public institutions to, to understand that concept and to really recognize uh, that concept in their, in their programs, uh, in uh, their uh, strategies and uh, in their uh, yearly uh, budgets, at least. Um, on the other hand, uh, we, uh, also uh, we as uh, countries are not in the full position to fully um, uh, use all the funds and uh, that is um, available by the European Commission. Uh, and uh, to use, uh, for example, uh, we have been uh, networking and uh, with various uh, networks uh, of uh, social enterprises from uh, Europe. And uh, we were mostly uh, trying to get to, to the question on how do, you, uh, how do you ensure your financial sustainability? And uh, usually the, those are the funds that come to, uh, from the Euro European Social Fund that for uh, Macedonia is still not opened. Uh, then um, on the other hand, um, uh, from what we can see from the inputs and the things uh, that we get constantly from social enterprises is that uh, they, uh, they don't uh, have uh, any access uh, to banks and uh, to loans. It's difficult for the banks uh, to understand what, what is uh, this uh, business uh, doing and how sustainability uh, can be ensured. Uh, we don't have uh, the, the, the finance, social finance uh, instruments. And uh, for example, even though the Fund for Innovation and Technology Development in their program, um, they recognize uh, social entrepreneurship, uh, this has to be then uh, as, a, as a program further operationalized and uh, made uh, more avail available because now it's only in the uh, program. Um, the, the, it's um, so they are kind of uh, in the in the between. Uh, they, it's uh, it's uh, difficult for for social enterprises uh, to operate, and um, uh, we have to be also uh, realistic that uh, the COVID nineteen crisis, uh, although uh, it uh, helped the uh, the, code, the stakeholders, especially politicians on new level to, to recognize and to, uh, to even to uh, provide stronger support uh, for, uh, for the sector. Uh, this uh, support is not, uh, is not still happening uh, in uh, our countries, in our uh, context. And um, on the other hand, COVID-19 put uh, so the social enterprises in front of new uh, challenges. Uh, for example, how to get, uh, how to digitalize. It's a concept that it's not really uh, fully understandable and uh, close to them. So that means that um, the ecosystem has to be very flexible, has to be uh, very uh, uh, fast in providing a response to the needs of social enterprises, because now uh, within only one year, everything changed. The, the, the needs of the social enterprises uh, changed uh, entirely, and we need to uh, be very flexible and very adaptive in order to, to uh, help and to ensure that the social enterprises are moving uh, forward and that, that they are using, uh, they are delivering the, uh, the entire potential that they can, at least uh, in um, our societies. Uh, thank you, Alexandra. Now we have come to to the uh, what Nevan said 
uh, you have to learn the languages of, of the actors because when you're going to private investors as a social entrepreneur, you have to talk about the return of investment. When you're going to public officials or public uh, funding, uh, then you have to talk about the social mission uh, and so on and so forth. But at the end, nobody wants to invest just in a social mission. Uh, it has to have a business behind it and a sustainable solution. So that's, that's the whole idea here. Uh, Marie, is there is this something, uh, how is it in Sweden? Is it something different? Is it the same? Is it better or worse? How is it in Sweden, the, the, the ecosystem and how social entrepreneurs navigate through this system? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, well, I, I think as I, as I said before, I think I think at least we, as an institution, when we when we teach these things, we try to to uh, we try to to navigate students towards a sustainable business model, that is a, a a business model which more or less becomes a hybrid organization. So it's a it's a social social organization that also makes makes a profit in the end, uh, and. Um, uh, and I think that is what most people do, because, I mean, I, 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 if you are not a charity organization, then you, you do have to, to uh, you have to pay your bills somehow, you have to pay your rent, you have to, I mean, you always have uh, some sort of uh, expenses that you need to pay, and in order to do so, you need to have an income. So, so and, and of course, these hybrid models, that could be that you, you are you are, um, uh, we have, we have, a, well, I can give you an example. We have an organization called Rude Food and they, they gather food that is uh, not, that is um, uh, from, from stores that they do not sell. Uh, so it has a, a very, um, well, almost, almost waste, but it's not waste. So it's still, it's still functional. Uh, they gather th that food and they uh, turn it into uh, uh, meals and they give the, these meals to uh, poor people. Uh, but they also make money because they have a cookbook that they sell. So they have, have uh, designed a, a, a cookbook, they sell that. They also deliver catering to other people. So they sell catering efforts. But in the end of the day, so, so this becomes a hybrid uh, organization. So they have found a way to make money uh, in order to, to uh, give poor people food, basically. Uh, so, so they have constructed a business model that, that works. So, and, and, and I think that is the way to, to, uh, for these kind of enterprises to work. They have to create an innovative business model that, that sort of serves both purposes. Uh, in order to be sustainable in the end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, Marie. Uh, it's interesting that because uh, the starting point is build a sustainable business model or sustainable business that will provide you funding and then do with them uh, basically what you want and achieve your social mission, right? So have a sustainable business model is the, the uh, conclusion here. Uh, thank you for that. Snezhana? Yeah, I think that we came to the part where we want to speak more about the networks that are operating in this field and why are these networks important. So Neven, maybe we can go uh, to start with you. So you are the president of the EU CLID network. So uh, how these networks are operating and uh, what the social entrepreneurs can have from the <laughs> Well, I think you know uh, uh, I have I have stressed uh, sufficiently the importance uh, for social enterprises uh, from networking and from actually uh, uh, trying to be much more uh, connected within their ecosystems. Uh, I will still be briefly on, on Euclid Network, which is a network of uh, intermediate organizations that support social enterprises or of uh, or of uh, social enterprise network operating in. Uh, 27 European countries, and uh, uh, I think you know what why, why networks are important. I think there are many different networks, and uh, uh, I think you know to a certain extent, of course, these networks are competitors, but only because they compete for the same 
limited, uh, I would say, uh, organizations and membership. But, you know, most of the times these networks are very complementary because they provide different knowledges, different uh, angles of, you know, how they support their their. their members i think one of the key areas where, where you can support six members is uh, uh, one of them would be peer learning so we are very much focused on actually uh uh, uh kind of believing uh in in the, in the notion that uh, there is tremendous knowledge out there already, which has been developed by, by our members from university, by our members from uh, incubators, members from uh, uh, social enterprise networks, and that you know we need to act as a facilitator of the exchange of this knowledge. Because you know, why would you go and spend tremendous efforts of uh, and time and money in you know developing I don't know program for support or developing a financial mechanism? Or developing, I don't know, a, a curriculum for a educational program where you can already learn and you know from experience of, of other parties. And the other, I think, most important uh, part is, uh, 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 you know, uh, translating, if you will, uh, you know, what our members' needs and uh, challenges uh, uh, to the European Commission, because you know, European Commission has a number of programs and strategies which are directed into the support of uh, uh, social economy, but this is not always uh, uh, on the one hand uh, heard by the social enterprises which are on the ground, and the European Commission does not necessarily always hear the voice of, of them. So what we do through our network of national partners and uh, uh, members, we ensure that, you know, in every process that the European Commission is engaged in developing support mechanisms, policies, or you know, uh, uh, funding programs, we ensure that our members have a say, and through our members, the social enterprises and uh, 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 you know, people working actually on the ground have their say about you know what needs to be done, you know, what are the challenges, what are, what are some of the key issues, and I think this is these two things are most valued, I would say, by uh, uh, by our members. And uh, yes, we are based in the Netherlands, in The Hague, but, you know, work throughout Europe. And, you know, if, if you see the, uh, me as a president, I'm sitting not in a, in a non-EU country. So, you know, it's, uh, 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 we are kind of proud of, of the diversity of the, of the network and, you know, we'll be looking in, in, in further, you know, growing it. Really a great, uh, great message and to hear the, the importance of the network, but also the way that you are connecting the commission and the entrepreneurs itself. So, and uh, Alexandra, so you are involved with the social enterprises network in uh, North Macedonia. So how this network is functioning and how it is supporting and helping social entrepreneurs to grow their business. Well, um, and first I would uh, I like to add that uh, networks are uh, actually one of the key components of the ecosystem of social enterprise because uh, the, for primarily they uh, they reflect the capacity of uh, the social enterprises to to self organize and to uh, become advocates for their own uh, needs. Uh, so the, um, the social enterprise network in uh, Macedonia, it's uh, operating as an informal uh, network. And um, we are uh, pr primarily trying, uh, trying to be uh, as an organization that is currently, that initiated and that currently is uh, coordinating the network. We try to be the, the voice of uh, the social enterprises. Uh, and uh, to be uh, advocates for uh, social enterprises on national level uh, and uh, to and uh, to advocate for better policies and better political recognition of uh, social enterprises but uh, from uh, very uh, from um, recently we also uh, start um, started to uh, be the voice of uh, social enterprises on uh, eu level and uh, uh, to, uh, uh, through our activities with the DISIS uh, network, we are uh, trying uh, to really um, uh, extend a little bit more the agenda of the European uh, Commission when it comes to providing support uh, to social enterprises on uh, the Western Balkans. 
because uh, from what we have uh, seen uh, from uh, the, uh, from the pay, uh, from the social business initiative and the entire financial packages and activities that has been implemented uh, with uh, this initiative as uh, the start the impact evaluation of uh, uh, that uh, initiative uh, shows uh, that uh, the western balkans are a little bit uh, uh, behind with the development of the ecosystems so that means uh, that now with the new strategy the um, and the action plan of the commission a different uh, set of activities and measures uh, should be at, at least we expect uh, that should be foreseen uh, to better address the needs and the gaps uh, the existing gaps uh, uh, two of uh, Western Balkans, and in order to enable the, their ecosystem to uh, to reach uh, to the uh, develop the development of the ecosystem of other EU countries, uh, maybe this is uh, uh, yes, it's a, a lot to expect, but uh, that that's uh, that's something that we are willing uh, to achieve, and we hope uh, to achieve through our activities. Uh, that now uh, through on uh, that we try to um, uh, implement on uh, EU level. Uh, moreover, on uh, national uh, level, we really try to uh, to uh, to keep informed uh, social enterprises on uh, new financial instruments uh, to uh, keep them informed on uh, events uh, and uh, capacity building uh, programs that are of uh, their interest and um, also we try to encourage uh, better cooperation and partnerships between uh, them. And uh, now in, uh, through this uh, year, uh, with uh, the activities uh, that are foreseen in the companies doing a good uh, forum, we are taking a little bit more regional uh, perspective and uh, with, uh, we will be uh, more uh, focused on, uh, on um, building partnerships between social enterprises and uh, the traditional business sector and uh, hopefully through the presentation of uh, the good examples that come from IKEA and Decathlon who will be uh, sp uh, speakers uh, on uh, the event, we will uh, try to encourage uh, these partnerships and uh, a better uh, cooperation. And uh, as, um, as uh, publishers of the uh, street uh, paper, face to face, we do a lot of work in promoting uh, the social enterprises. Uh, we publish their stories, we promote them on our social media, on the, to our uh, street paper. Uh, so we, we, we are really, we really try to be, to stay rooted uh, deeply in the ecosystem and uh, try to uh, to respond uh, to to the identify needs and uh, of course uh, we try to uh, to uh, now in North Macedonia there is an ongoing uh, project for technical assistance for social enterprises and through our activities we uh, in uh, that uh, in the different uh, groups and uh, within that project we also try to advocate uh, for in the better interest of uh, social enterprises thank you thank you very much and it is really great to hear that you are having several initiatives that are helping and supporting the social entrepreneurs so Marie, we now heard about the networks that are operating in Serbia and North Macedonia, but also European networks that are involving Western Balkan countries. So maybe we can hear more from you about the networks that are existing in Sweden that are supporting social entrepreneurs. And also it will be good to hear the connection if you are, uh, if you know, maybe some connection between the Sweden and the Western Balkan countries in this field, are there some kind of cooperation existing action? Unfortunately, I don't know. <laughs> and I, and I, I, and unfortunately, I don't think so. Uh, not at least on, on, uh, on, um, uh, on on uh, any regional levels, I don't think so. Maybe maybe there are there are connections. I mean, if we look at the Swedish Institute and and and, uh, and parties like that, there might be some some uh, uh, connections and and cooperations going on. Uh, of course, the SIP programs, uh, the uh, 
uh, young professional uh, programs that are provided by the Swedish Institute could be some some uh, collaboration in, in that respect to to uh, capacity uh, build um, <clears throat> young professionals from the from the Western Balkans in uh, in both in in ecosystems and and uh, and also in social matters. Uh, so that is of course one kind of of uh, collaboration that also creates a network uh, from the alumni that has taken those those uh, courses in the end. Um, Otherwise, networks for 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 social entrepreneurs. I'm, I'm not sure that there there are that kind of of networks. It, it's it's more like networks for entrepreneurs or networks for enterprising people, uh, people that are entrepreneurial, people that want to to do things. There are a lot of networks uh, for those, and and most of them are are. Um, or there are different kinds of networks. There, some of them are, are self-created. I mean, they, they do a Facebook group and they get together and they have a lot of posts on the Facebook group, help each other out and, and, uh, and do things like that. And then there's also, uh, if, if I speak from the university side, there's the student incubator venture lab where people get together uh, doing all kinds of businesses from social to high tech, uh, basically, and 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 they have a great alumni network there too, where people get together and give each other advice, connect to other people in their network, and they are located in the science park with all the support organizations surrounding them, uh, from business advisors to to business angels and and uh, connecting uh, connect, which is a, a a connecting organization uh, which connects entrepreneurs with venture capital or or business angels uh, so so there's a there's a lot of support organizations located in the same place uh, also where this the where the the entrepreneurs are so so that that is sort of a, a local network uh, which is very dense uh, because everyone knows anyone and if you enter into that you are immediately accepted as one of the community uh, so so um, uh, I think that that most of the networks uh, that are in Sweden are built bottom up I mean they are self-generated in in a way and entrepreneurs if they are students or others they they are in the community and they they know each other they uh, help each other out and so on and so forth yeah. oh. and if, and and yeah, I, I could add on that because there, there are also some some larger companies have actually started accelerator programs for social impact there is there is one called uh, change makers for instance it's an uh, accelerator program built from from a from a from a larger company so they they try to make uh, that kind of of uh, yeah uh, that, that's a csr activity uh, but but they want to make a change and they help out uh, entrepreneurs that that want to do that too yeah thank thank you marian yes i think that uh Stefan and myself can agree about the importance of the site program as we are both alumni of the, the Lund and Swedish Institute Network. And I think that this our project is a great way to present how important is this networking and the cooperation and what we can do between our countries in the Western Balkan, but also in the cooperation with the best practices from Sweden. So I think that it is great that you mentioned this maybe at the end of the, our conversation today. So it is really great. Uh, okay, guys, now, now we, are, we have come to, to the, the final minutes of the webinar, let's say. And uh, we always close the webinars with, uh, with one question for you all, basically. And that is the a message for new and upcoming entrepreneurs. But before we, we come to that, uh, we have uh, received uh, several messages, uh, several questions from Facebook and in, in the sense of time, in the respect of, of your time as well, uh, I would just pick one and uh, basically merge 
and combine it with, with our last question and with the message for new and upcoming entrepreneurs, let's say. So Elena asked, uh what are the first three steps that a social entrepreneur should do in these kinds of ecosystem and uh, that is a question from from elena and uh, if we can combine it for example uh what would be the first three steps for social entrepreneurs to do uh, in these ecosystems and to close it with your message for new and upcoming social entrepreneurs marie can we start with you <laughs> I was hoping I was I was being sure I, <laughs> that I could think a bit, but okay. Um, uh, the, the first three things, uh, that, that is really hard because that depends on what kind of idea uh, that, that you have. Uh, but I would say, I, I would say talk to people. That would be one first step to take. Go out there and talk to people and see if there is if it is possible uh, to, to do what you are thinking about doing, is there really a need out there and, uh, and, uh, and, and how could you make this happen? So go out there and talk to people and listen. Uh, that would be my advice. And then I think uh, if you are unsure about your idea, if you're unsure of if I'm going to do this or not, give it a try, just try. And that would be my advice to any entrepreneur, basically. Give it three months of your life. If you don't, you will regret it. So start out three months, see if it happens. If it does not happen, you can always try to, to, to get a job somewhere. If it does fly, you can move on to another three, three months and see what happens. And then you can move on like that. So don't think of this as a huge project that you need to spend your lifetime doing. Think about it in three months and, 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 and then move, in, move along uh, in that direction. And my third thing would be to, uh, to uh, recommend you to actually do things. Don't, 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 uh, don't think, well, you have to think, of course, but don't analyze so that you get paralyzed by your analysis. You have to do things and then you analyze things as you go along. So that would be my three, three things, I think. It was three. <laughs> yeah, it, it were three. Uh, thank you. It, it was a great message as well. Uh, so thank you for that. I think that uh, this would be very helpful for, for the new and upcoming social entrepreneurs. Alexandra, can you go second? Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, I will. I think that, uh, yeah, uh, uh, along with uh, what uh, Marie uh, told us, I think uh, my suggestion would uh, be that um, not everybody and not everyone can be a social entrepreneur. And uh, my first step uh, would be that uh, in order to be a, a social entrepreneur, you have to have a lot of values as a person. You have to believe in uh, the change you are willing to, to do. Uh, so um, if, you, and if you don't ha have this as a, as a value, uh, then uh, it's almost, at least from my uh, perspective, it's impossible to be a social uh, entrepreneur. And uh, being a social entrepreneur in uh, many times, it uh, means um, uh, a journey with a lot of sweet uh, challenges. But uh, at the very end, uh, there is uh, nothing better than the feeling when you see that you help somebody to improve uh, their quality of life. When you see a, a former homeless person now living a decent, a decent and uh, independent life, or a person with a disability that has been completely excluded uh, from the society, now is uh, actively involved in the open labor market, or when you see that uh, the uh, the clothes. Uh, waste from clothing has been considerably reduced after one year. Be without uh, believing in what you're doing, uh, nothing, uh, you, you cannot be a social entrepreneur. It's a different set of, a set of mind that you need to nurture. Uh, thank you, thank you, Alexandra. Uh, well, so believe in yourself, believe in your idea and nurture your values, right? And practice them. Uh, and Nevin? Uh, yeah. Who would your uh, choice be? 
I, I'm glad I was I was going last. I was afraid that you know because uh, you, you you wouldn't call me up to 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 go uh, first with this tough question. I think recently uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I I found a note like a book from three few years ago, the the power of unreasonable people, and it's about social entrepreneurs. And basically, you know, it says that uh, it's based on the quote by uh, Bernard Shaw, where he says that uh, reasonable people uh, uh, adapt themselves to the world and unreasonable people try to adapt the world to themselves. And thus, whole progress lies on unreasonable people. So I think, you know, the message to social entrepreneurs is, you know, would be to be unreasonable <laughs> to, to a large extent, you know, and to try not to go with the status quo, but to try to actually change things. And, you know, where everybody sees a problem, they actually see a business opportunity, which is unreasonable <laughs> by itself. Uh, second thing would be, you know, what Mariana Alexander said, like to talk, 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 and to test their idea, to talk to as many people as possible, because you never know, you know, which part of your network that you have built informally will actually help the start of your business. The third one would be to believe in your idea. But, you know, know that, you know, uh, uh, although you must, you might be the smartest people in the room, not necessarily your idea is bulletproof and the best there is, you know. So try to, you know, try to get all the constructive critique that you have and, uh, and, and try to improve your idea based on that, not to, you know, fight as hard as possible to... And, uh, and finally, you know, try uh, uh, not necessarily, you know, you will be, build your idea at this very specific moment, you know. So I think social entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs because of the set of skills they have and because of the values that everybody said. So what we see a lot is that, you know, maybe sometimes the time, time is not right for the idea. But, you know, if you stick with these values and you do something else and you build your kind of, you know, personal set of skills, Maybe, you know, two years from now, it will be the, the, the right time to, to start your idea. So, you know, being entrepreneurial does not necessarily mean being an entrepreneur all the time. It actually means, you know, having the spirit of being entrepreneurial. So, you know, build your network, build your skills and, you know, listen to people, but still, you know, stay unreasonable. That would be my advice. <laughs> Uh, yes, I think that from from the, this is the fourth webinar that we're doing, and from all four webinars, uh, we have discussed that you have to be unreasonable, uh, you have to be considered crazy, and uh, many other attributes, let's say, uh, in order to succeed as a social entrepreneur. And because you mentioned George Bernard Shaw, I would just uh, finish this webinar with with his quote uh, because. Progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. So uh, I live by this uh, by this quote basically because I believe in believe in it strongly. Uh, guys, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope that we can will collaborate again uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, please be available for discussions and uh, events like this because in COVID time. This is all we can do right at this point uh, until it, it it finishes. So uh, yeah, Snezhana, can you add something? No, just also to thank you all for your time and it was really great discussion and I'm so glad that we made such important topics and uh, messages to the other people for listening to us and at the end to thank to everyone who was listening here in Zoom or also Facebook pages and follow us. We will be every Thursday at five speaking about the importance of social entrepreneurship and to share the good practices from the whole, not just region, the whole Europe. So looking forward for the next initiative and the next joint activities. Thank you guys again thank, from us. Thanks for the invitation and uh, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Have a great bye. rest bye -bye. of the day. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.